So let's talk about these Champions Cup quarterfinals, some absolute crackers, and let's look ahead to the semi-finals and talk about how my predictions worked out. The first game, Bordeaux versus Harlequins in the French Sun, an absolutely classic game of end-to-end -end rugby, so exciting, that was something I'd predicted, but I thought Bordeaux would have slightly too much, and in the end, Harlequins came out with a brilliant start to the game and held on. Bordeaux did come back and showed us what they could do. They are a cracking team. I'm gutted to lose them from the game. I love watching Harlequins, but goodness me, I love watching Bordeaux as well. And in many ways, Bordeaux would have been good winners as well if they'd got their game going earlier, but Harlequins, a brilliant win away from home as well. And that opening salvo was brilliant. Two tries in absolutely no time. The opening try was really interesting because it showed Cunningham South is a real diamond in the rough, a game changer because he makes metres after contact. They've got some big lumps in the second row to be those enforcer tights, but that power, Cunningham South brings it, but then he drops his first pass. On the second play, he's a savage. He carries past the contract, making crazy yards. Don Brandt, maybe that's not really his game. And then he also loses it in contact the next time he carries. So that kind of shows Cunningham South in a nutshell. He's a brilliant prospect. If he can be polished, he could be amazing. Now, the second try may be a penalty try, but if you go back far enough, I actually think it's the young loosehead Finn Baxter who crushes uh, Tamifuina in the scrum that really starts it all off. So he is a young prospect who's now coming into his own, becoming the first choice for Harlequins, and I'm sure he's going to be playing for England before long. Yes, he's got the face of a choir boy, but goodness me, he is a very, very good tight head. So that's one person there. And the second person who makes that try is Marcus Smith. When I did my comparison of all the England 10s who have been playing really well recently, I said the one thing that Marcus Smith does better than all of them is making two on twos into 2v1s. And that's exactly what he did here with his hitch kick, his acceleration. He goes round, I think it's Moa Fana, makes a two on one for the slap down that is the penalty try. So that just highlights two really good players. Bordeaux, they look really dangerous, that is for sure. The back line we knew is absolutely lethal, but Harlequins, they rush. They scramble, they just make Bordeaux rush the pass enough to knock away a few of the tries. Now, I'm not saying Quinns aren't deserved winners, but Bordeaux, they are going to be kicking themselves for sure because they couldn't get their game going. But I think they really are a top team, actually. On 35 minutes, it has to be said that Garcia absolutely butchers a walk-in try for them. He could have gone flat to De Portier or wide to the wing. He kind of does half of it on his pass, bungles it. So that could have been a try. There was some ridiculously a good offloading as well from them. Uh, Burris, the fullback, and Biel Barry, their pure pace try was really impressive. So as good as Harlequins were, and they were good, Bordeaux know they have botched a prime chance at home to get to a semi-final. So as much as I like Quinns, I am a bit gutted not to see Bordeaux go a bit further. Some other interesting things. Quinn's third try was created by a sick line from Alex Dombrandt, and the offload highlights his strengths with his game. He's kind of a slick outside centre. He's trapped in a big number eight's body. So it kind of depends what sort of player you want if you're talking about England. So I thought that was interesting. Now, Quinn's out of all the semi-final sides. They're more likely to chance their arm from anywhere, which could be a strength or could be a weakness. So will Toulouse be able to pounce on this? Will they punish them? Or will Quinn's be able to play that exciting game against Toulouse that they did here against Bordeaux? Now, the Leinster versus La Rochelle game, obviously a repeat of the final, looked like the tie of the quarterfinals, and it was a good game. But really, Leinster, they dominated that game. 40 points to 13. What a statement. Leinster are saying, we are definitely in this hunt to become champions once again. The back-to-back -back champions are out. It definitely felt like an international at the Aviva. Big advantage, it has to be said. The crowd, it just sounded like Ireland were playing. And of course, most of their players are Ireland anyway. But still, it felt like that high-level international game. The defence of Jacques Nineba, the new defensive coach, of course, of Leinster. That was really impressive. Is it just because I'm thinking about it more? Or has it got more bite than it did before? It definitely got in the face of La Rochelle. Hit them really hard. Even though La Rochelle, they competed hard in all areas. Leinster are the better team in all those areas. Slightly slicker drills in the lineouts, the malls, all those sorts of things in the contact area. And of course, that beautiful choreography, quick attacking phases and good ball movement. It has to be said that not all phases piled over the gain line, but sheer number of phases eventually made the breaks, made the gaps open. And that's exactly what happened for those first two tries of Lowe and Jameson Gibson Park. And also Leinster were held up over the line many times. So a really impressive statement for sure. 
Leinster haven't dropped off, they are here, they are serious. So hard to pick standout players for Leinster because they were all good, such a good team performance, but Jordan Lama, what an all-round game he's got now, so much better than when he burst onto the scene for Ireland and Leinster with all that pace and footwork. He's still got that, but now his defensive work, his reads are so much better, so much more reliable. Will he then break into the Irish team? I don't know, but he was looking really good alongside all the other players that look great all the time, like Jameson Gibson Park again, just ridiculous. The athletic bed, so amazing. Will he break into the starting Irish team as well? So... A really impressive performance for them. La Rochelle, I don't think they were that bad, actually. They just couldn't get the momentum going. That swarming blue wall was so impressive in defence. Leinster look Champions Cup ready. They are kind of at home again because they go to Croke Park. If you don't know, Croke Park is a GAA stadium and even bigger than the Aviva over 80,000, I think. It's going to be absolutely deafening in there. So if it was an advantage to play at the Aviva, it could be even more of an advantage to play at Croke Park. So Northampton have really got their work cut out there, but an impressive statement from Leinster. Then on to Northampton versus the Bulls, 59-22. And the score kind of says it. And I was a little bit subdued on this game, not because I don't think the Bulls played well, because it has to be noted that the Bulls kind of had to make 13 changes from the side that took apart Leon at home. And it has to be said, the Leon side that went to the Bulls, they were very changed as well. So this travelling to and from South Africa is a bit of a problem, even though the South African teams, I think, bring so much to the Champions Cup and the URC. That travelling is a problem because you want the Champions Cup to be the best teams on the pitch. And there were lots of players who had just come back from injuries, some that couldn't travel. Uh, Kurtley Renzo wasn't there, of course. So... Yeah, there's still some good players, but you could see they weren't as slick as Northampton. That being said, the number eight, Hanukkah, looks a real prospect for the Springboks. Hooker Aka van der Merwe is always really good value, and he did a good impression of his brother doing van der Merwe bursting down the wing for a nice try. De Klerk is a really good winger, so it's a good team, but they're not as well rehearsed as Northampton. Northampton, a class act, it has to be said, as a team. The pack is kind of hard working. There's not too many superstars there. You know, Augustus smashes it up. Graham smashes it up. The second rows are really solid. Uh, Ludlam comes on, so they truck it up all day. Laws is a really you know, good third option in the line out, of course. And, and Langdon is a brilliant hooker hitting his men in that line out, adding a bit of stardust as well, I guess Langdon does. But generally, that absolute star power is in the back line for sure. Alex Mitchell started this game and looked really sharp, really fresh. Finn Smith, he's just seeing those passes so well. He knows what the team is doing around him and he's just so calm in the face of the defence. Freeman in at 13 looks good and that lets Slight Home be on one wing who is amazing. His power, his pace, he batters through tackles. He carries on after contact, a bit like Faye Wabusu. Imagine both of those guys on the wing for England maybe. And George Hendy continues to impress on the other wing. So it's a really, really good back line given lots of ball. There's so many options in those back line plays that it's hard to mark them all. And Bulls being a little bit of a disparate team at the moment, while well, they were kind of run ragged. So a good effort from the Bulls, but completely outclassed. Northampton deserve their semi-final place. But yes, like I said, they go to Croke Park. Can they possibly turn over Leinster there? A massive step up. So maybe this game wasn't the best preparation for that because Bulls weren't at their best. Now, the final game of Toulouse versus Exeter was 64-26. So it looks on the scoreboard like Exeter got absolutely smashed. And, well, they kind of did. But in the first half, it was super competitive. It was like a Rocky movie. They were really slugging it out. It wasn't pretty. And then the dam breaks. And when it breaks, goodness me, it's an absolute flood. Exeter, they've got a solid team shape. The likes of Devoto and Slade are good ball players. But generally, they go head down attack quite early when they get into the red zone. And they've got some extra forwards, if you like, with the wingers of Faye Wabuta or Woodburn working in around the ruck, coming in tight, making extra yards. Faye Wabuta, again, slipping through a lot of tackle. So they were very good. But I think a bit of the difference in the first half was Antoine Dupont. Even though Exeter are playing well, all it takes is a little break from the base, sucking in a player or two, getting an offload in. 
and you make an even defense into a mismatched defense, making those two on ones. That's where the first try comes from. Dupont sucking in a couple of players. On 16 minutes, Exeter's tight bash actually works. Malvaca gets a yellow card, which helps, of course. Then a nice inside pass from Tuima. That catches Toulouse Colden. Roots goes over. So they get on the scoreboard. 7 13 it is at that point stage now to lose a clearly rattled they're struggling to get some momentum in their phases it doesn't help when their prop Cyril Bailly stoops to try and pick up a bouncing ball and he looks like a 90 year old trying to stoop down and tie up his shoelaces it doesn't look good Hodge hacks on 60 meters and they could have scored but they don't so that was a big moment in the game when they did have a bit of momentum they couldn't quite get that extra score so it wasn't good to watch so it looks like Exeter might go into half time with the lead away from home that would be massive but Jack Willis turned it on he had a massive game once again he runs through Harvey Skinner and they take the lead 17-16 so that first half was a bit of a gutter war and that really suited Exeter so could they keep it going well well no they couldn't at the start of the first half Exeter are defending well but again it's a couple of half breaks from Antoine Dupont Lots of long periods of possession and finally Kinghorn spots the gap and they get into their groove finally. 24-19, then some poor errors from Exeter. LaBelle is so quick for Toulouse, absolutely lethal all game. And a huge gap off first phase, gifts an easy try to Aki, so it goes 31-19. And just when it's looking bad, it really goes all cows udders up as Exeter's extreme outside to win rush defence gets it wrong they get picked apart and some ridiculous offloading um, from Costas we have 38-19 then another length of the pitch try finished by DuPont so in the blink of an eye about 10 minutes the game is absolutely gone any positives for Exeter well yeah the first half I guess and the inside centre Zach Wimbush looks like a prospect in the future six foot five but apart from that Toulouse broke far too many tackles they've got all the skills and speed to finish it as well Jack Willis looked great Dupont looked great so in the end it finished 64-26 so prediction wise I got the Harlequins one wrong but that was super close so the rest of them I think went to my predictions with Northampton winning Leinster winning and Toulouse winning so we've got some fantastic semi-finals here really well matched because I think we've got the two complete teams if you like in Leinster and Northampton who play great shapes into play really intricate well rehearsed Toulouse can do that but they do go to some more offloading some looser play and then Harlequins of course are the loosest of all so it's fantastic stuff there styles make matches and I think these two match up really really well but away at Croke Park surely Northampton can't do it they're going to be complete underdogs but they're a good team like I said they've got a decent bench if they can get maybe a little bit of luck maybe execute early on maybe get a lead who knows but Leinster they are going to be massive favourites there then of course the same in France a neutral venue but in France Toulouse versus Harlequins surely Harlequins can't go on the road again to another massive French team and win this time an even better team in Toulouse so Toulouse are going to be massive favourites so I'm pretty sure if I put it to a vote it would be Leinster and Toulouse going to the final but can one of the English sides put a fly in the ointment who knows? Let me know below. If you like these sorts of videos, subscribe, like. That would be amazing. All those comments down below on these quarterfinals and these semi-final matchups. Love to know what you think, and I'll catch you next time.